Hello, viewers. This is my Koji or Ipuk attempt number two. I'm growing mold on rice for brewing. Koji is a special ingredient used to make rice wine and other products. Ipguk is the Korean word for koji. Koji or ipguk is made by adding mold spores to rice. I tried this once before, but the mold sporulated and turned green. This caused bitterness when I brewed with it. So I'm trying again. If you like this video, please click that like button and subscribe, and please share this video wherever it is appropriate. I appreciate your help in spreading the word about homebrewing rustic Asian rice wine. Koji or Ipguk provides enzymes that break down starch to sugar. As this is happening, yeast, which we add separately, converts sugar to alcohol. In terms of converting starch to sugar, koji or ipguk has a similar purpose as nuruk or Chinese jiaochu, yeast balls, but uh, it's not the same as either of these. So here are the differences. Koji or ipguk can be made in two days. Nuruk and jiaochu take weeks or months to make. Koji, or ipguk, is made from a single kind of mold, but nuruk and jochu contain multiple types of microorganisms. The last big difference is that koji, or ipguk, produces a simple, soft flavor, but nuruk and jochu produce a complex flavor. Now about the terminology, since ipguk is the same thing as koji, I could say I'm making ipguk or koji here, but since the package of spores has, that I'm using has Japanese writing on it, I'm going to call it koji for this video. I'm following the instructions on visionbrewing.com, which is the source of my mold spores. So I'm starting off with 400 grams of sweet rice. I'm washing it carefully, rinsing it repeatedly. I forgot to mention another one of the differences is that a koji for brewing is typically made with, with rice and uh, the nuruk for brewing typically made with wheat, although there are many other kinds. So the base grain is different. Um, of course, that's going to give it a different flavor as well. Okay, so we're going to soak this rice overnight. And then the next morning, we steam it. And uh, steam it for 40 minutes. And meanwhile, let's toast some rice flour. This will be useful later. So just one teaspoon, about five grams of rice flour. And uh, I think I have my pan just a little hot here. Yeah, this is too hot. Um, okay, well, this is gonna get toasted right away. Um, yeah, so start. it's starting to turn color even. Okay, so uh, the purpose of toasting it is to uh, get rid of any microorganisms that might be in the rice flour. We're going to set that aside to cool. And now the rice, the steamed rice is done, and we're going to spread that out to cool as well. And we're going to let that cool to 30 degrees Celsius, and then put it in the pan here. We want to mix the mold spores with this rice, but the mold spores are so tiny that it's going to help to mix it with the rice flour. That was the purpose of using the rice flour. Okay, I'm trying to break up the clumps into individual rice grains as much as possible. I don't want to squish the rice or, or break the rice grains themselves, but I do want to separate them. Now here's the rice flour and uh, so I want to mix some of the mold spores into the rice flour just to dilute them a bit because I only need um, half a teaspoon of spores here. So mix that with the rice flour 
and then carefully sprinkle that mixture over the uh, steamed rice, which now should be at about 30 degrees Celsius. So by mixing it with the rice flour, hopefully that makes it a little easier to get an even distribution of mold spores. Otherwise, it's just such a tiny amount, it's hard to mix it with that amount of rice. And also my goal here is to make sure that every grain of rice touches some of those spores. So that's, that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I'll use the remaining amount of uh, rice flour plus, uh, plus mold spores. Okay, so should be distributed pretty well. Since it didn't work last time, I'm trying to be extra careful to make sure this is mixed properly. And uh, since last time I had a problem with it drying out too much, I'm gonna make sure I have a wet cloth. Now I've, I've wet this cloth in boiled water, so it's sanitary. Place the tray in a temperature controlled chamber. Very high tech one like this. Well, actually, this is pretty low tech. Um, set it to 30 degrees. You want a consistent temperature, like within, let's say, one degree of 30 degrees Celsius. Two hours later, I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna keep the cloth moist, again, using boiled water, since that was my problem last time. It, I'm gonna make sure this one stays uh, humid. And then four hours, moisten the cloth again. Six hours later, I moisten the cloth. Eight hours, I'm going to moisten the cloth and mix the rice. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to, once again, I'm going to try to separate all the grains of rice, make sure everything is mixed together as well as I can do. Put the wet cloth back on top. and close it up again. So it's been staying at a consistent temperature and it's been moist, but at 10 hours, I'm going to moisten the cloth again. And at 12 hours, I'm going to moisten the cloth and mix the rice again. Okay, let's take a close look here. I'm not seeing much mold yet. After 20 hours, I'm going to moisten the cloth again and mix the rice. Okay, there's a bit more mold. Maybe there's something I can see there. And it smells sweet. So it's 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 started, but it's 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 not moldy enough. So it's definitely not ready. It should take about two days to complete this process. Okay, back in the temperature control chamber. So after 27 hours, time to uh, time to mix and moisten again. Take a close look. There are some patches of mold. Um, it um, seems to be on most of the grains of rice. So that's um, okay. So that's progress. There's not too much time left though. So after 36 hours. I'm going to mix and moisten once again. Okay, now there's some larger patches. This this is better. Um, still not good enough. So 36 hours is not enough time. Now the instructions actually say 40 hours. Um, I'm going to have to let this go more than 40 hours, but we don't want to make wait too much longer. So now it's been 48 hours. I don't. I really don't want to wait any longer than this. It, um, it does smell more cheesy now. That's one of the ways you can tell it's more mature now. So let's see if it's ready. Let's take a close look. Okay, so now there's lots of white mold. That's good. There are some bits of green though. That's not good. That's what I wanted to avoid, but it seemed like I had to let it go this amount just to get enough white mold. Okay, I'm gonna spread this out to uh, dry a little bit. Let it uh, 
let it sit out for one hour, and then, uh, yeah. Okay, so it's not too bad. There's not a lot of, of green on this, and it seems like every grain of rice has some mold. Um, so I'm going to weigh this. It weighs, I started with 400 grams of rice, now I have 550 grams from absorbing the water. I'm going to divide this into two packs, put one in the fridge where it should last a few weeks, and I'll put another pack in the freezer where it probably lasts six months or a year. Of course, the real test will be to brew with this koji. So that's what I'm going to show you in another video. Uh, that's the only way I'll be able to tell if I was uh, more successful than my uh, last attempt at making koji. So uh, wish me luck on that brew. Uh, hope you found this interesting. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you for watching.